Hello and welcome! We have made it to the point where we're going to infinity and beyond and we're gonna reach for the sky. Toy Story 4 finally came out and we're gonna talk about it! Toy Story 4 was released. It was hyped for many 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 years and talked about and I think we found out that they knew they were doing it for a very long time but kept it under wraps for many years and it's been joked about, especially with the Muppets. Muppets Most Wanted has a joke about it. While they wait for Tom Hanks to make Toy Story 4. As well as other media, I'm sure, but it's finally arrived and I got to see it. All of our characters are back, so of course Tim Allen and Tom Hanks are Buzz and Woody. We have all the original cast for all the other parts except for Don Rickles of course because he passed away but it was really nice because I did salvage all of the media that he recorded and were able to still feed lines into the movie so he was still part of the movie even though he passed and it was a really nice tribute even though it was such a very small part obviously because he didn't have too much to work with at this part and just like with every movie we have the old cast as well as a bunch of new characters and honestly this is what i was most excited for i feel like the way they advertised it with bunny and ducky I love them so much. What, wait, what about Buzz Lightyear stuff? I am Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger. <laughs> and then Woody's like, you are a toy! Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Woody. Do the flying thing he does. Do it, do it, oh, do oh. it. <clears throat> to infinity and your ma. And they honestly were the best part of the movie, as well as Forky. I really loved Forky, so the three of those characters were my favorite right off the bat. Tony Hale played Forky and did an excellent job. Keegan-Michael Key played Ducky and Jordan Peele played Bunny and I love it so much because I know they were a comedic dude beforehand which I didn't follow them and I only knew of Jordan Peele because of the horror movies that he's done but it was a refreshing outlook to see that he has this vast genre and he can do comedy so well and horror so well and he's just extremely talented and honestly a genius and again they are my favorite part of the movie. Forky I love too but like Ducky and Bunny were number one and they were the best. And then we also had Gabby Gabby and the creepy knockoff slappy dummies that were also new characters and Duke Kaboom who was Keanu Reeves. And Gabby Gabby was voiced by Christina Hendricks and Christina Hendricks I've seen in a couple different things and she did a really great job with her voice and We'll get into that more in a second, breaking down the character. Technically, Ducky and Bunny were also minor characters, but they stole the entire movie and were, again, my favorites. And I would love to see more with them used in shorts in the future, because we all know that this is still not the end of Toy Story. Even though they said it's the end of Toy Story, they just built an entire land of Walt Disney World, and they're gonna milk it for all it's worth. This is pretty cool. I do like the giant pictures that we're walking to. Well let's break down the movie anyways. And warning there will be spoilers because it's just easier to talk about. So going forward this film I was hyped about because of the trailer they really sold it and made it seem like it was worth watching and overall I enjoyed it I liked it but I didn't think it was that needed. I am one of the odd people here where I'm analyzing the entire serious of this movie and I know it's for kids and I know it's just a nostalgic fever dream in a sense and you just have to take it for what it's worth but I was getting so much anxiety from the fact that the toys were sneaking around and being in different places because I'm thinking of the realisticness of it and how terrifying it is that these toys are alive here and they could just move on their own and be living and you could think you're putting them in one place and then they're not in the other place and then just going crazy. And I'm not a toy person to begin with. And I say that as I have a bunch of toys behind me. <laughs> but I appreciate them as an adult, as collectors, not something to really play with. I've said this before with the other reviews I've done for the last three films. And if you want to watch them, you can watch the link below. But it just is a very creepy fact to me. I'm not a fan of it, but I do like the characters. 
but the entire time the fact that these toys are moving around and then they're going and being like oh Bonnie's coming or the parents are looking for something I'm just thinking wouldn't you be yelling at your kid for misplacing the toys so often? Wouldn't you get concerned that these toys are getting misplaced in, in different places and your child can't hold on to a toy? I know the kids are young enough that they're not going to pay attention to be like, oh, this toy was over here and then it moved over here. That's fine because they're not going to pay attention to that and they could think, oh, the parents moved it or someone moved it or they're not going to think about it. But as an adult, now, that is a very high concern that I make sure things are placed in a certain way and everything's clean and I know where it is and then if I turn around and it's not in the exact same place and it got moved, I'm going to be freaking out and being concerned about it. So, while this whole adventure story is happening, that's the only thing I'm thinking about <laughs> and I'm very, very, very highly concerned about. And, major spoiler towards the end, they end up hijacking the father's car and making it go crazy. It was the most climactic moment of the movie and I was just freaking out because these toys are popping tires so they're stuck while they're waiting for Woody to come back from the antique store and they're hitting the lock and locking him out and everything and I'm just like this, you would think that this car is haunted. You would literally think this car is haunted because it's just going and malfunctioning all over the place. and. They're just like, I don't know what's going on. And it's just their concern, but they're just frustrated instead and thinking that it's just a malfunctioning car and it's not. I would be freaking out thinking it's haunted, because it is. Because it's haunted by a bunch of toys that are trying to keep you in one spot forever. But backing up to the main story, it goes back to Woody and Bo Peep and I know in Toy Story 2 they kind of eliminated Bo Peep from the story and didn't really focus on her as much. This is a redemption story for Woody and Bo Peep and it is really nice and I do like where they end up but I felt like it dragged a little bit here and there. There was a lot of static points where they only had a couple locations and everything the main point of the movie took place in the one area either the antique store or the carnival that was down the street or the RV and there wasn't a lot of movement and they were just in the one area I think because of the other films they did explore a lot more and it's still like a rescue mission similar to Toy Story 2 where they have to rescue Woody or Buzz. It's been a while since I've seen them, but it's the same concept. And I feel like it's a little bit overdone in different situations where Woody has to deal with the fact that he's not the favorite toy anymore. And, and now he finds Bo Peep and can stay with Bo Peep and has to make the choice to either stay with Bo Peep and be a lost toy or to be with Bonnie until she grows up and then he'll be abandoned again. And it's a very sad reality for these toys when you really take it, break, and think about it. They're depending on these humans and when the humans are done with it then they're just don't have anything to live for and they're depressed and it's very serious. I didn't cry over any of this but I just felt very saddened and concerned and at the same time a little bit creeped out by the entire concept of it that these abandoned toys are just sitting around not having a life purpose because the kids grew up. Another side note that's not related to the story at all but is is I was more intrigued by Andy. Andy's off to college and then the sister Molly was never talked about and I know at this point they're not relevant to the story but I want to know what's going on with them. I want to know their life and I'm very intrigued by their life and how they grew up and what happened to them and what Molly's doing now that she's grown up and what is Andy studying. Like these are the questions that I want to know and I know it's not their story. It's Toy Story. It's Woody's story. But I'm more concerned and intrigued by the human characters than the toys. The other new characters that were involved were Gabby Gabby and the creepy ventriloquist dummies and of course they had jokes about how creepy they were. But at the same time, I know ventriloquist dummies all look the same, but they literally look like Slappy from Goosebumps. You've made Slappy very unhappy. He's not going back on the shelf, ever. And I couldn't stop thinking about that. <laughs> but honestly, and I hate dolls, 
Sloppy was a better character than these are. And that's because I don't think they really had any lines. They were just Gabby Gabby's servants. Uh, hey, howdy. Hey there. Uh, sorry to bother you, but... Why, you're not a bother at all. We were just out for my early morning stroll. And look, <laughs> we met you. My name is Gabby Gabby, and this is my very good friend, Benson. Oh, oh. Uh, Whereas Slappy is a lot of fun, and even though he's creepy, he adds so much to the story of Goosebumps, and I love Jack Black, and Jack Black did an amazing time voicing him. So, I actually like Slappy better than I did these ventriloquist dummies, and I know they're completely a minor. And Gabby Gabby is the pure villain of the story, but she's really not a villain. And they even turned it down too, that her whole purpose of kidnapping Forky and, cause Forky gets kidnapped, and Woody having to get him back because he has to return Forky to Bonnie cause he, Forky's Bonnie's favorite toy, is because Woody is from the 50s and has a voice box and Gabby Gabby has a faulty voice box and she just wants to be played with as well. So her m motivation is valid and you do feel bad for her and she's not truly a villain, she's just more of an antagonist and they don't really have a true villain of the story compared to in the past where Lotso was a true villain, although it was understandable why he was a villain and the same thing with the second one where the collector was more of the villain but he didn't know either and he just wanted to send them out to make money. I realized in a lot of the Toy Story films they don't really have a straight up villain. They do have a lot of characters that do have complex morals and they have a reason behind it. So you still like Gabby Gabby for the most part even though she is the true antagonist of it and she does kidnap Forky and keeps him as hostage. But I, there's just overall, it didn't add up to the hype compared to the promising trailer they showed, in my opinion. And it was needed, but it wasn't. And it wasn't a true perfect film to me, even though it's rated 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I just didn't feel emotionally attached to it compared to the other ones because I bawled at the end of Toy Story 3, but I didn't cry at all. And I liked the comedic relief. They really were the best characters. Forky, I love his existential crisis and his build up as character development worked really well. He was amazing. I do love Forky. I am not a toy. I was made for soup, salad, maybe chili, and then the trash. He also was very reminiscent to Inside Out, how joy and sadness worked as characters, that joy was a really pop bubbly one, and she was leader of the group and everything was her way, but then sadness comes in and it's just a lump of sadness and doesn't want to do anything and completely changes the plot because of the fact of who she is. They use the exact same formula here where Woody is the leader of the group, but then Forky is brought in and he doesn't want to fit into the rules and he completely changes the plot and makes the plot happen because he wants to be in the trash and not be a toy. So it was a little bit repetitive too and very noticeable in my opinion that they were basically reusing the same formula even though it was completely different and that's just a little nitpick that I felt while watching it. That being said, Forky is still a lot better of a character and a lot more funny of a character and a lot more enjoyable compared to Sadness was. So I give him more credit because of the fact that I enjoyed Forky about how he kept going on being like, I am trash. I laughed at that. I relate to that. So I love him. And like I said, Ducky, Bunny, best, best, best. Their scenes were hilarious. I was laughing out loud and it was amazing and they did a wonderful job. So those are my favorites. I did love them. Everyone else kind of fell flat. Duke Kamboom as well. Didn't really do anything for me either, but he was more of a minor character. But 
I feel like everyone will have their favorites and have different opinions about it and I would love to know your opinions about it too because I'm sure everyone else has a favorite character and not everyone's gonna think the same way I do. It was just interesting. I'm still happy I got to see it and it'll be interesting how they are incorporating it into Toy Story Land again because it just opened and once they give it a little bit more time Will they add Forky? Will they add Ducky and Bunny? Will they add arcade games and do a little carnival section into Toy Story Land? Because they do have a lot of room to play with and the way it ended was very bittersweet. It was a clear ending but also a really good beginning because they could still play around with it if they wanted to make a TV series out of it. They could do that. They could do so much with it. So I doubt that this is the end of Toy Story as a cinematic universe. I think they will continue on, at least with shorts, definitely. And because Disney is a milk money making machine, I would not be surprised if we had Toy Story 5 down the line and it showed the adventures of Woody and Bo Peep now that they're together again. That's my review of it. And with that, it comes to, we are wrapping up unofficial Pixar month. So, as always, you guys can have a magical day and I will see you real soon.